What's going on guys? Hit pause here for part 3 of the EQS tutorial. So uh, we have set up this crap here. Uh, we basically got the basics for our character to, to move. We've got a test object that we can use to see what the query is actually doing. And we have some context here so we can tell it what object to use. And we have our query itself here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more tests. So the next test is going to be distance. Okay and this distance is going to be to the player okay because we want to find the farthest distance within this range uh, this is not necessarily a this isn't exactly a necessary test um, because what I want the guy to do is I want him to run as far away as possible up to 800 units because again remember our max path distance here is 800 units so it's 800 units from the player uh, we want him to stay on that we want him to stay on the edge of that as much as possible okay so basically we want it distance 3d we want the context to be player and we want to score only okay and we want to use a positive one here because we want it to be as far away as possible after that's done we're gonna add another distance check this distance is gonna be to himself to the querier okay which actually could be the bot but we'll do the uh, we'll just do querier here uh, okay and it's again it's gonna be score only okay and uh, except this time we want this to be a negative one and what you'll notice is that this down here now says prefer lesser okay if I change this to a positive one it says prefer greater prefer lesser so we check out of all of the points which ones can the player not see okay then we say okay well which one is the farthest one away from the player okay and then we say which one is the closest one to us and that's going to be our final result pretty simple pretty simple and actually really really powerful really exceptionally powerful so now we need to go to our behavior tree and we have it set here okay remember this is a sequence so we need a service here to tell whether or not the player is seen now this is going to be kind of the long part and I'm debating whether or not I want to uh, go through this and actually do this on camera because as you can see here it's a little bit extensive um, I'm gonna create this but it's pretty simple I don't know if I wanna like I said I don't know if I really wanna recreate it on camera cause it's gonna take a little bit just just to basically push this thing out um, to connect everything up but basically when we res when the service starts we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna cast it to the cause remember the, the controller is what calls a service right the controller is what, ru what runs the behavior tree and everything so we're gonna cast that to the controller we're gonna store that for access later we're also gonna get its controlled pawn okay then we're gonna cast that to a character so we can store it later remember this only happens the first time it fires now I wanna make it clear that this doesn't happen every time the service comes in okay this only happens ever when this happens boom once this fires run the behavior tree this uh, that service which I haven't even made yet uh, which is here which I'll show you guys here this service runs and it's never gonna run again okay uh, just keep that in mind so these variables get stored and whatnot uh, it'll also happen when a character uh, like a new character gets spawned but if it was dead but once it's spawned this this should only run one time and then we open a gate for a tick to come through because we don't want to start doing anything until we've set these things it's just a simple safety net right here so basically the gate uh, then we check or we valid that's always a good check to do because we get the player character if the players died we don't want to worry about this uh, then we get the distance to our other actor which is uh, basically right here my character and the target will be the player character so the distance between the bot and the player okay we whatever value we check here okay this probably should be 800 um, if false we basically set that player key to zero okay to, to false so it's not that the, the value gets set to, to nothing if it is within a distance then we go ahead and we run a visibility check right here okay now these pluses right here are just to say to get the actors location um, we did this because we wanted it to go from head to head okay from the from the players eye height to the other players eye height uh, otherwise it's going from crotch to crotch and that can run into issues when you've got low slung stuff 
Uh, he wouldn't see you even though he could technically see over this block or something. Okay, I, I think a smarter approach would actually be to get, like, to throw sockets at their eyes and trace from socket to socket. So if, if he can make eye contact with you, he can see you. If you played a game like Alien Isolation or stuff like that, um, the, the alien basically usually, for the most part, can't see you uh, unless it looks, unless you can see its face and it can see your face, and it's also random as to whether or not it's actually looking in your direction. But like, if if you're under a table or something and it's far away down a hall and it could clearly see you, it will see you. Just because you're under there doesn't like give you like a you know a hidden flag or something to him if he can see you. But for the most part, if you can't make eye contact with him, even though he's got no eyes, he doesn't see you. So that's basically. Um, I think a smarter way than doing this, but this is a quick and simple way uh, to do it. Okay, so if he can see you, then we basically say, well, the it's line tracing for objects. So if the object is the player, then go ahead and set the he can see you. If not, he can't see you. So it's pretty simple. Uh, like I said, I, I I don't necessarily think I want to actually create this on camera because it's just it's it's all right here uh, if you guys want to pause I know this is kind of a low res this is just a screenshot uh, this is what I'm gonna use okay so if you guys want to pause through that but this is a kind of a general check that uh, you guys should get used to creating uh, line checks uh, for tracing for a particular object you always want to just run a trace to it if it if what it hit is it then you're true. If not, then it's false, right? That's basically what we're doing. Hey, I'm looking at you. If my vision makes it to you, meaning it didn't get blocked by anything, then I see you. If not, I don't see you. But I may not want to care unless you're only within a only within my freakout range, right? Which would be whatever this is. Um, so this is a quick and easy way. It's like, hey, if you're 50,000 miles away, I, I I can't see you. Why even bother running a trace that far? You know, I already know you're a mile away. I can't, you know not going to bother. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to set up the rest of the um, behavior tree to run the next things. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a task and this is going to be move to. Okay? And this move to is going to move to the point that we want to go to. I don't think we're actually using self factor anywhere, but oh, we want to run some decorators on here just to make sure that this doesn't run if move to point we want to make sure move to point is set and we'll add another decorator blackboard decorator here and we want to make sure that can see player is set so we're not if you can if we can't see you we don't want to do this and if we don't have a point to run to we don't want to do this and then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to wait basically one second and before we try again okay and I can't remember if there's a decorator on that. There is. Okay, so can see player is not set. So this will only run when we have a decorator on a blackboard that is can see player. Blackboard key is can see player. As long as that's not set, then we'll wait. Okay. So this is as pretty much as simple as it gets. All right. We just run through a sequence. Uh, remember a sequence. Uh, one of when one of these fails, it comes back up and does something here. So this is going to fail. This is going to fail. This is going to fail this is going to be true. This is not going to fail. This is going to succeed. It'll basically hang out and it'll basically hang out in here until this fails, right? And this is where we need to add a service. Okay? So what we do is we can do a new service and we'll just compile and save and we end up with that service here. And what we'll do is we'll call this BTS and we'll be just check for player. Uh, I'll just call it that. I mean, this is basically uh, going to be this this whole thing here, okay? Um, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to end this part, and because I'm not going to, I don't really think it's worth me doing on camera. Um, you can see that the query has changed, by the way. Uh, the query has changed here. So it's scoring based on distances from itself and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's acting a little funny because of uh, the fact that there's no player here. The player, the, the missing player is screwing up the query, so it's scoring things that are right close to itself as the highest value uh, because that visibility check is not here, and it's also the distance from the player. So as you can see here, uh, everything that's 
you know outside of the the basic range is pretty low and it's kind of filtering down so you got 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.7 0 0.8 and that's right on on me so right now it, because there's no player it's just preferring the points that are closest to me right those first two filters or scores are not factoring in so okay so I will make that thing and then I'll be back and I'll show I'll show it to you guys one more time when I get back and then um, we'll move on from there